Madam President, I speak on behalf of Armed Action International and other four organizations, the full list is in the statement uploaded to the extranet. Since the COVID-19 outbreak, dozens of countries resorted to emergency executive powers for pandemic control. While some restrictions were justifiable, many were unnecessary or disproportionate. These powers were often misused to center decision-making and resources in the hands of the executive, and while experts and health professionals were sidelined, law enforcement or even the military emerged as central to the COVID-19 response. As a consequence, many COVID-19 control strategies were lacking in transparency, accountability, and meaningful community and civil society participation. The result was described as a pandemic of human rights abuses. Vulnerable, marginalized, and criminalized communities, such as people who use drugs, people in detention, migrant workers, and sex workers were disproportionately affected with a direct impact on their alter rights. While this council is ongoing, another process is shaping up in Geneva with the potential to define not only pandemic preparedness and response, but also global health governance for decades to come, the negotiations of the so-called pandemic treaty. We are concerned that discussions at WHA about the new treaty have been mostly silent on the matter of safeguarding human rights, particularly those of criminalized and vulnerable groups here addressing today. Further, the process is currently envisaged lacks virtually any space for meaningful civil society participation. This pandemic has shown us the importance of a multi-stakeholder, community-led, evidence-based approach to pandemics that safeguards and reinforces human rights protections while ensuring participation, transparency, and accountability. It has also taught us that the treaty must set up a mechanism to ensure fair global access to pandemic health tools. To achieve this, the treaty must be developed through a transparent and meaningfully consultative process, and the Council and its members have a heightened responsibility to ensure this is realized in negotiations. Our question is, how do Council member states and OHCHR plan to align their positions in these processes and engage at WHO to ensure human rights are streamlined in treaty negotiations while supporting the meaningfully and effective participation of civil society? Thank you.